All right, welcome to the second part. I mean, if the first video was Star Wars, this is The Empire Strikes Back. Quick overview. The spoils of war equals kingdoms growing richer. This is a practice that all kingdoms have followed throughout the ages. Real simple, Kingdom A attacks Tribe B or Kingdom B. It's usually the one that's least protected and they take all their stuff. And for the people, they became the subjects of this new kingdom, Kingdom A. My second point is that you have to have a kingdom to have a king. You have to have an empire to have an emperor. Just a group of people doesn't equate a kingdom. So to be perfectly clear here, kingdoms are synonymous with kings. It's their vision of government, either realized or yet to be realized. Now my last point or characteristic of what makes a king is something called the divine right of a king. This gives him his authority to be a king, to make laws and rules is coming from God. Now, these three characteristics are three of the, the basic things that almost all kingdoms have shared in common. There's a lot of debate and argument over this, but generally this is what all kingdoms have in common. Okay, let's go back to that tribal family. Now these guys have just arrived on the planet. They're refugees. They quickly get to work repopulating this planet called Earth. According to biblical accounts, a young man starts to get a lot of notoriety with his hunting skills. He's called the Mighty Hunter. His name's Nimrod. According to the Jewish Tanik, says he was a warrior and there was no one as mighty as Nimrod on the earth. So this guy, Nimrod, starts to become our first king. According to a lot of Hebrew and Christian tradition, Nimrod is the guy that builds the Tower of Babel in the land of Sinar. It goes on to say that he started the early kingdoms of Uruk, Akkad, and Chaldee. There are even some sources that say that he built the first cities in Assyria. One legend describes him seeing this vision in the sky and he called one of the craftsmen to make this image he saw and he put jewels on it and wore it on his head. So he's alleged to be the first king to wear a crown. He established idolatry and fire worship. Also, it's worth noting that the text in the Bible, a mighty warrior on the earth, the root word in Hebrew is easily translated into tyrant. So we mustn't look too highly upon him as a good king. If anything, he was a, a cruel and wicked king. In some cases, he's even considered the poster child of an evil king. There is much more to tell about this story. Nimrod was married to Queen Semiramis. She plays an important part in establishing the existence of false religions because she was worshipped as the mother of gods. After the death of Nimrod, she bore a son, Tamaraz, and she claimed that Tamaraz was supernaturally conceived, and she declared the boy to be Nimrod reborn, and he has come back to rule the world. Some scholars claim that all pagan religions can be traced back to this origin, the story of Nimrod. So he makes a really great first king on the earth. And this will set a backdrop to the Hebrew nation and how they had to stand against all these false religions that are tied into these kingdoms. So I'm going to sign off here. Stay tuned for my next animated commentary.